Hello, and welcome back to the product launch of the Ethernet IOLINK Master. My name is Donnie Sogalis, and I am the product manager responsible for this product. Today, we will be covering session three. So let's get started. In sessions one and two, we covered a number of topics on IOLINK and the Pepperell and Fuchs IOLINK Master. In session three, we are now ready to review the final list of topics. Note, some topics in this session will be a review to reinforce some key points. The list of topics include a recap of the parameterization with IOLINK, introduction to the IOLINK device tool, and finally, data types with IOLINK. In session one, we discussed two existing ways to configure IOLINK device parameters. This was possible with Pepperell and Fuchs SmartBridge Interface or USB Master. In this launch, we introduced the ability to configure multiple IOLINK devices connected to the IOLINK Master using the IOLINK tool. Access to reading, writing IOLINK parameters is also possible using the integrated web server. This will be covered in our discussion as well. So now, Let's introduce the IOLINK device tool and its key benefits. The IOLINK device tool gives you the ability to establish a connection with an IOLINK master to multiple IOLINK devices. More importantly, it provides a user interface that clearly displays the three different types of IOLINK data, process, status, and event data. To get this tool, please contact the Pepperell and Fuchs technical support team. In session two, we discussed where we can find Pepperell and Fuchs devices that support IOLINK. Now, in order to use the IOLINK master with the IOLINK device tool, we must locate the IOLM file. Click on Products, Industrial Communications, IOLINK, IOLINK Masters. Select View All Products in the group. Here we will find our IOLINK Master. As we click on the Software tab, the IOLM file is located under the Software Tools. The process of registering our IOLINK files is very easy in the IOLINK device tool. In the menu bar, all we need to do is select Options and the various selections for importing in our IODD file and our IOLM file. This will build a catalog for us of the various devices in our IOLINK device tool. Step 3 requires us to search for our IOLINK master. Having the identity recognized in the catalog, we initiate a search of the master by clicking on the option in the upper right corner. As the search is performed, our IOLINK master is discovered. Now, let's check the IOLINK devices connected to the various ports on our IOLINK master. To initiate this search, Click on Go Online, synchronize the configuration if it prompts you, and check the devices on the various ports. Here we see ports 1 and 2 have an R103 sensor connected to it. We'll click on the Take Over Devices into Engineering, and this allows the two devices now to be recognized on the two ports. The IOLINK device tool displays a large quantity of parameters and diagnostics available for the connected IOLINK devices. In this case, as we click on one of the R103 sensors, we can look further into the different tabs available displaying the IOLINK parameters and diagnostics. There are three types of data available with IOLINK devices. Process data, service data, and event data. 
Let's further understand what is meant by process data. Process data is information such as switch signals or distance values. On this slide, we take a closer look at the process data of an R100 sensor connected to port 1. Some important details worth noting about process data include Process data is cyclic data. This means the data is automatically populated for you on a cycle time. In other words, no external commands are needed to initiate displaying this information. Information on IO Link devices may appear in multiple locations. In the left capture screen, the location of the process data is shown within the IO Link device tool. This same format could just as easily be monitored in the integrated web server. Note, these locations are worth noting because the format of the data is the same format as it would appear in a PLC, that being hex format. Now, let's move on to discussing the second type of data. Service data displays device attributes and parameters used to identify, display, or reconfigure a sensor. This slide takes a closer look at the service data of an R100 sensor connected to port 1. Service data differs from process data in that this data is acyclic. In this case, the data is not automatically populated on a cycle time. A command must be initiated in order to display this information in the PLC. Finally, the third type of data I wanted to discuss is event data. Event data is a notification or flag created when a critical event occurs. This slide takes a closer look at the event data of an R100 sensor connected to port 1. Additional device diagnostics are also available in the IO Link device tool in the Diagnostics tab. Some additional diagnostics may include if a sensor has been bypassed or disconnected. This slide lists two key documents that will be helpful references to further understand the Ethernet IOLink master module. Links have been provided for each document. Before we depart, I wanted to be sure you are aware of the number of ways you may connect with us here at Pepper and Fuchs. These include technical support, ask the expert, website, Twitter, and blogs. I encourage each of you to keep in touch on any questions or concerns you may have on Pepper and Fuchs products. Have a great day and thanks again for attending the webinar.